Hey, this is Retired Geek Woman Adventures with Rhiannon Kinseed, Retired Slow Play, part number 35. And we're going to take up right where we left off. And oh my goodness, the beautiful graphics in this game get me every time. So as you can see, I'm going to start off here with my normal morning chores, which includes sending Ash off to do some fishing where he's working on Tirnanog and he can get up to four stars now. So I'm going to do a little housekeeping while I'm doing the morning chores. First off, there's going to be during this video, a secret word that I want you to use down in the comments section in a sentence. So don't say this is the secret word is whatever. Um, use it in a, in a sentence and make my day. So don't don't make me sad. Make my day because I always look for those and I love it and I will respond as time permits. Uh, for my new subscribers, first off, welcome so much. I'm, I really appreciate you guys. Every single morning I get up and I check my YouTube app and it's like, oh my gosh, there's more. It's so exciting. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Note that this video says in the title, Retired slow play and what that means is I play games in a relaxed way it's different than anything I had seen that I had been looking for on YouTube where I was trying to find videos for things everything was all min maxing power gaming and how to get a billion uh, brass in the first year or gold or whatever the game currency is and it I just found I just wasn't finding what I was what I was looking for which was a more relaxed way so that's one reason why I created this channel so it apparently other people feel the same way I do or at least enjoying my slow play shenanigans so there is a plan though for this series and all series is that I do I'm going to at least get to when my character the Rian and there turns 50 and the farm gets goes to the next heir I have to choose an heir and basically you live on in that heir it's a really interesting game mechanic I've never seen before and so I'm really excited about it I can't wait to see how that all works so I, I definitely am gonna play through that I don't know how long it's gonna take to get there I don't know that anybody really does so if you haven't done so please subscribe to my channel it really does make me happy when I see those subscription numbers going as each individual subscription is a person who took the time and thought that their subscription that I was worthy of their subscription so I do appreciate that if you like my videos please give them a thumbs up I love it when I'm seeing that likes and things so th those things all combined with your comments and things do let YouTube like me better I've been asked if it matters and yes it does um, so please do that I want YouTube to like me better on my main game gaming channel there is a number of things I want you to pay attention to. There's a community tab. On the community tab, I give messages to the group as a whole. So unless everyone's listening to every video that I'm recording and I want to say something or let them know something, there's no way to do that. So the community tab is the place to do that. I make announcements there. I might put post pictures of my kitties there. I might post various videos there. I might do polls. So please check that community tab regularly. And the about tab is my schedule so currently I am uploading Stardew Valley on Mondays and Fridays Ken Seed on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. all of those on 11 a.m. American Eastern Time so that's my schedule and if I'm gonna change that schedule or if it has a change it will be announced in the community tab I also have playlists that you might be interested in looking at and I do organize my game my playlist by the game there's a number of them there and there's also even game reviews so take a look at the playlists you might find other games you're interested in playing and if you'd like to help out an old retired gamer I have a patreon account so thank you so much most important thing let's have some fun so morning chores are kind of done I am I'm at the point in the morning time, I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm sending Ash off to wherever he's going. I'm trying to give manure to the sheep. I need to get another sheep for sure. Um, and then I go, you know, just kind of checking things out, looking for anything I can, like the, the herbs and things that go around the house, I go check them. And then I usually head off for whatever my adventure is. To this to particular day, I really wanted to get my tools reorganized because 
I was thinking that things are just not the way that I want them. I was sort you know, they didn't make sense. And I should have done this a long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. It takes me a while to get to things. Uh, but I'm reorganizing them according to what they are and how I use them. So that's why I took a few minutes to do this. And also, just in case nobody's ever played this game, I, they can see how this works. It's pretty pretty uh, standard for hotkeys and things on how that all works. So that's what I was just trying to do is get it all organized and it's like, okay. And so also if you see it's up, it means it's a usable thing. So I could hit the six key and it will bring it up. You see, I hit the six key and it brought it back down. So pretty standard stuff. Today is a Druda day. So we get to make our offerings to the goddess. For making your offerings, you really have to, this is for planning ahead. So whatever you're choosing is going to be for the whole next week. So as you can see, there is curses and boons. So boons are the, uh, so like if I pick a boon, there's gonna be a curse associated with it. So I really, really, really would like to have two additional stars on my crops because I am planting fields and things, but you have to have an item that's required that had five stars. So in this case, um, I didn't have anything that was five stars, so I'm choosing um, um, a medium chance for harvested crop to whatever. I think it has two, is what it said. I'm sorry. It'll show a, a summary at the end if I'm, if I'm done choosing. If you haven't seen this before, you choose one, at least one offering. You can make up to three offerings. And um, I can. T this one bugs me because I, I really like the fish spawn rate. Um, but at the same time, if I'm in planning season, I really like the, um, I really like the one that, uh, gives me seeds for, seeds for weeds. So I'm choosing the fish spawn rate. I really got to get my, uh, um, fishing going to get my shop stocked up because I do have a fishing store and we'll talk more about that later, but here we go. So when we do the summary, here we get these, uh, once I confirm, it gives you the summary. So herbs, fish bond rate, and crops yield two. So that's not too bad, that's a good one. So again, I hate it that I have to have either a fish spawn rate or get weeds for seeds. So anyway, I kind of alternate it, but mostly weeds for seeds is what I usually pick, but it had been a long time since I had um, picked the uh, fish spawn rate. So I really need to get some fishing done. And I have zero idea if this, if this affects ash at all. I have no idea. This is our fast travel and so as you can see uh, you just put it, you click on it and it uses an apple. So apples kind of our currency for your fast travel. There's other ways later that we'll find on how to fast travel but this is one of the ways and here we are. So this is Poppy Hill right here and what I'm looking for is the shops and things. I need to get a copper sword for Inkabod and I kept um, procrastinating it because I knew I would have to go somewhere else and buy one or make one one or the other and so I thought I'd take a look here and I'm gonna have, I'm just gonna have to make one so and it's like I, I give up <laughs> and I'm sure I have copper I have all kinds of ore that I've picked up or I've gotten as um, gifts or whatever I you know I've, I know I've gotten all kinds of ores and they're just around here somewhere. I do know that when I go to the uh, um, the place where you make the swords, I'll see, yeah, there it is. I've got 21 copper. I'm pretty sure that no matter how bad I am, I should be able to make a copper sword. I'm not real big on blacksmithing. In fact, I don't like it at all. When If, if you don't own a shop, you can pay five uh, brass and to borrow it or to rent it for a moment. Basically, put the two things in there. You uh, click on the bellows there, and it makes a sword. Then you put your sword in the heat. So you click on that, and then you watch this. And I burn it up, so I have no dur <laughs> no durability. And then these little things here, you have to click and hit them right on, and you can see I'm off, good, off. <laughs> I'm just so terrible at this. And apparently, the higher the um, the higher quality of the ore, the harder that little game gets. So in the green. Did I make it? No, probably not. It's like, oh my gosh. And then you gotta sharpen it. This is the worst part. You have to hold that mouse down and the, left, the mouse buttons down and get on each side to get rid of the green, but not get in the red. So I did a terrible job. 
So one star, that's exactly what I expected. So I have a one star copper sword. And I thought, you know, do I really want to spend another five copper for that? And the answer is no, nah, not really. I want to take this sword, give it to Inkabod, and hopefully it'll be good enough for him. He's going to give me 50 brass, which, you know, I spent five, so I'll have 45 profit out of that and some friendship points. And I think it also completes his story. So what I'm looking here is uh, these events um, that are on these boards, if you put the, if you click on them, they put them on your calendar. And so if you don't, then those, you don't know when those things are in these different locations. Some things are, but some things you don't know where they are. So I really need to run around and get all these, these boards, um, these bulletin boards, I guess they are, uh, and get and just get these events on my calendar. I really want to know when those things are because I really want to start going to some of them. Um, in the morning, if you've noticed, in the morning times, sometimes I go over and I look at my kin seed over there. The kin seed is the tree is my family tree. It also has a whole bunch of tasks that it wants my characters, this particular generation, to accomplish. It has a whole bunch of stuff, a lot, some of which I've already accomplished. But there's other things that I have not. There it is. Sheep racing, ship, sheep market. That's what I was looking for. Five, yeah, all right. That's what I was looking for because I want another sheep. <laughs> I think I hit it up by accident twice before. I hit it one day and I ended up buying a couple of sheep. Well, I need one more because you can only have three and I want one more. So great, that accomplished a number of things today that I set out to do, so perfect. I started to talk about the plan for my game and the plan for the playthrough. I told you the end goal, but the in-between one, in-between goals, uh, initially my, I wanted to have a family and I've started, got a good start on that. Um, I got married and got three little babies that are all in cribs. Then I wanted to be a successful shop owner and I have two shops. I have an apothecary that's doing quite well and I'm very happy about how that's going. And I do also tend to micromanage it, which, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> I micromanage it, but I'm happy about the micromanaging. Um, so the, uh, the general store, I turned it into a fish market. And the purpose for that is because I absolutely love fishing in this game. Can't tell you why, because I hate fishing in all games. But in this game, I really, really like it. So um, I decided to make my general store into a fish market. So far, I'm making a very small profit, but I'm not losing money, and I'm making a little bit of reputation. So it really just gives me a, an outlet for all the fish that I'm enjoying fishing. So that is my first two goals that I had. My third goal now is to make best friends with everyone in the Vale. And the Vale is the uh, one of the havens within the world of Quill. And so I'm trying to make sure that I'm starting there first and working on those relationships. And I do that by uh, gifting people things, by doing tasks for them. So um, that's why you can see me, I'm trying to give a gift to John Bowes. He's not here, so I can I have put him in the mailbox. I love this, that I can do that. And I just hit full friendship points with John Bowes by putting something in his mailbox. So you get the same friendship points you would get and with those friendships come all kinds of things. They send you gifts in the mail. Uh, they will, some of them have a final task that they'll give you that when you do that final task, it says their story is complete. And then the other thing is some of them will start giving you numbers for an heirloom chest that belongs to the household. So if you watch a previous episode, we made uh, best pals with um, old Jacob, which we're learning a little bit stuff about old Jacob, which is kind of fascinating. So we made best friends with him and he gave us the entire code, all three numbers to the family heirloom chest. And he, we, we made best friends and then he asked us to do a task. We did the task and then he gave us the code. So we were able to open the chest that you can see that's in the cow family. Uh, house, farmhouse. Sometimes the chests are located within the house, sometimes they're located uh, somewhere else, like a base, they call it a basement. I think the brown would call it a storage basement or something. I don't know what they called it. So not all 
houses have heirloom chests. You just kind of have to look around and see. So I had made a note when I was had started making best friends with people on whether or not I had seen it. If I'd seen a chest, I made a note of it. So I knew that I didn't want to stop. Once you get best friends, they don't necessarily like uh, Arthur Brown and Pappy Cow. They'll give you the whole code. That is not normally the case. What's hap what other what happens normally is you just keep giving them gifts and slowly over time, one at a time, they will give you a code, and uh, one of the codes of the three numbers. And so we haven't seen too much of that yet. It's just I mean it was just sheer luck that it happened to be Arthur Brown and Pappy Cow were the first ones. So the other ones are going to be more difficult, and we'll see those over time. And so it's very exciting when you get to open a chest. I mean, Pappy, the, the cow family had a recipe for mother's milk pudding, I think it was. And so I think, if I'm not mistaken, there was no other place to get that recipe. So uh, important to get those chests open. Uh, the, Brown, the Brown family gave us 10 four-star rainbow mushrooms. It's like, holy cow, you see me skipping the pear tree there? Uh, I read that you get higher quality four four-star apples. When did that happen? <laughs> Uh, you can get higher quality pears if you harvest during rain. So I'm trying to leave the pear trees for rainy days. Coriander, yeah. We saw a rating tip on the coriander, so if I ever want to get better coriander, I'm going to have to go back and read that. I think at some point in a future episode, we're going to go over some of the menus that I haven't really covered yet. And how, like, how do I find out about, you know, the, the cuckoo dues? What if I want a higher quality than two star? What do I do? So I'll, we'll kind of go over a little bit of that and look at those because I haven't done that yet. I think we glanced at them in the beginning, but we didn't have anything to show. So now we got some stuff to show as we've progressed. And when we give people gifts, they actually give us tips. I forgot to mention that's another reason to be friends with people. So if you, if you give them a gift, let's see what happens when we give Teresa Green a gift. We know she loves carrots. And look at that, 18. Is it going to make it? It'll make it? Not quite. She'll get another carrot maybe tomorrow. Here's a secret for you. My most liked item is a cabbage. She told me something about herself, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, so you get tips like that, things that people like or don't like. You get birthdays, people telling you birthdays. I was looking for Isaiah. I didn't see him anywhere, so I thought, you know what? I'll just come right here and give him, send him a carrot in the mailbox. There we go. And so... Uh, you learn likes and dislikes. I mean, there's lots of things that they tell you. Sometimes it's things about the world. Uh, sometimes it's nonsensical stuff. It's like, what? You read it and go, does that make sense or is that just me? Uh, <laughs> so uh, this is Rosemary Brown. Rosemary gets born between the time you're 13 and 15. You lose five years of your life and you come back and the Brown family actually has a baby and now she has grown up. Um, so we're going to, uh, there's also, a part of this, oh dear, this is Copper. Copper, we trashed his relationship in our previous episode. So if you want to see how that works, you're more than welcome to go back to episode 35 and watch us trash our relationship. So we gave him a carrot one day and we gave him a blueberry one day and he apparently hates those two items and it trashed the relationship. It, yesterday we lost 50 uh, friendship points with one little mistake. I think that's kind of harsh personally when you're only getting, you know, 9, 10, 11 friendship points at a time. One little mistake and you lose 50. I've lost 61, which I think is a weird arbitrary amount, but it's not fun. It's not cool. It's very sinking feeling and the sound effect is perfect. Why am I getting four star apples today? There must be something about apples that I'm not remembering or a, a tip about apples. I mean, look at this, four stars, whatever that is, I need to figure it out because I've been getting one and two stars. So not cool. Uh, that's called a homestone right there. And it can tell you who lives in the family house and your relationship with the family. Uh, gooseberry pie, I don't have any of those. Maybe you would like one of those. Nine, really? It's like, uh, let's see what we can do here. And you can see these unknown birthdays. Eventually we're gonna know all these birthdays. There's Clay, we finally are best friends with Clay, awesome. And we really do also need to double check on Edna because uh, the Clays and the, the, the uh, kettles and the teapots have this feud going on and they want you to, um, uh, who, that's Edward, they want you to prank one e to each other. So their storylines, 
uh, their last task is to prank the other family, which is horrible. There's all kinds of ways you can do it. The easiest way is to take your slingshot, go to one of the family members, and just start hitting them with your slingshot. It really ticks them off, and you do lose friendship point, uh, which is okay. You can gain them back. It doesn't tank them 61 points, that's for sure. At least I don't think it does. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, crazy people. The crazy people. There's lots of interesting stories like that. Um, and background stories, and, and you, you can read about them later. So I decided to summon my dog Digger, and I thought that I read something about Digger and coin tails. I, maybe I was, re I thought I read it, I should have checked it. But I decided to bring him on, he's starving to death. He hasn't had any food for a while. I don't typically, typically don't feed him unless I bring him with me. And when I bring him with me, I definitely need to feed him because um, he he will do better, he will behave better, and if I'm going to fight, like I'm going to go into one of the woods and take him with me, then I definitely want to make sure that he's full and he's in a good mood. And um, I just want to give him anything to get him full and in a good mood. So right now, he's getting some of those um, weed skimmers who we always have so many weed skimmers. Oh, look at that, full and mood's good, not too shabby. So now I want to see if there is a difference in the coin tails in the quality. Uh, I was getting two star before he came along. Let's see what we get now. No, nope, it didn't make any difference. So I was wrong about that. I, I really thought that it said something about that. Let me see. Coin tail. No, I don't actually have any. I have a proverb, but I was wrong. So it must be something else that if you have a dog with you that it increases the things. So you can rating conditions. I had no, no rating conditions uh, for coin tails. That's what I was looking for. And I thought I would maybe look for foods that help with fishing. In all honesty, I don't even know what does help with fishing. So this is kind of a waste of time. I really need to um, look into that. I need, there's all kinds of books and things that you pick up along your journeys. And they give you all kinds of information. And I think there may even be a book about fishing. Seems like that twig gave us one. So I need to look. Um, I thought, man, what if I eat a coin tail before I fish? Hmm. I don't know if that's going to help me in any way, shape, or form. I thought, what the heck? What could it hurt? Let's give it a try. Uh, I know there's more coin tail in here. I see them. It's the right time of day. It's the right season. And two. Nope. So that didn't matter one bit. <laughs> oh, well. It, it was worth a quick try. And so it's already 8 p.m. It's like, where has this day gone? Oh, my gosh. So what I'm going to start doing, and I have started doing, is when I come to the apothecary to do the remedies and such. I'll show up to when I make the first remedy and then we'll do a time skip. And I always check my inventory. I made 122 today, that's fantastic. And I check and see if there's any ingredients that I can add to the uh, storage cabinet. And I do an inventory of what remedies are already here. And I literally do an inventory. I mean, I, I put my mouse on all of them and then I go to my Microsoft OneNote that has the um, a list of all of the things that I could potentially make. And this way, I'm very clear on when I go to the back room on what I already have so that I don't make more of those. At this point, then I go to the back, I pick something to make and for the purposes of the uh, the video here, I'll just do one. I do one potion or remedy, whatever it is. In this case, it's going to be a cream. I do one cream or whatever remedy I'm going to make. And then uh, after that, I'll do a time skip so that if I'm here all night long making remedies, I'm not boring you to tears. <laughs> and it makes the video shorter. I don't want to, I'm trying to shoot for 30, 45 minutes maximum on my videos. I'm getting better, but there's some times where they run over to 50 minutes or 55 minutes. Uh, but one thing I am doing is cutting out all of this uh, uh, potion uh, remedy making. And that way, if you want to go back to previous episodes, you could watch it all, but I see no need to do that uh, to you. So we'll just see how we go here. I've got one, I got it perfect and come on. <laughs> there we go. Ar Aric acid. Let's see how I did. One, two, three. Three stars. There we go. So we did have a time skip. As you can see, it is now midnight and I was able to make quite a few. I don't know if you remember what I started with. But that was quite a few. I did some, I felt like I made some progress there. I like having one of everything that I can possibly make. And so I'm getting there slowly. There's lots of ingredients that I don't have 
um, haven't got access to that's going to be better for the apothecary, but we're working on it. I don't have a comprehensive list of, all what I, of all the ingredients that I need to make all of the remedies. And some of them I don't have, seem to have access to at all yet. So that's okay. There's plenty of places we haven't been and we will get there. And on the way home, Digger is just going nuts. He's like, oh, and he got a bone and he got it himself. So he gathered it himself. So it's late, it's already 1, 1 a.m. And, and Ash just got home. So we had quite, quite a long uh, time there. And so, by the way, if I do a time skip like that, I will tell you in the, com in the uh, description when I do that and so that you know what happens. I, I feel really weird when people, like I'm like, wasn't it like I'm looking at clocks like this that I have on the corner there and it's like, it's six o'clock and six, all of a sudden it is midnight. And it's like, oh, I, what did I miss? So I don't like doing that. This is a playthrough and it's supposed to, to me, a playthrough should play show it all. But if sometimes if it's excessively boring, like remedy making is for some people, then I'll just go ahead and do a time skip and um, cut that part out of the video for you so you don't have to wait. And I'm getting, I'm so excited. I'm getting moonfish. So it's like, oh, this is awesome. Well, it's really interesting. I'm only getting one at a time. Why? Usually I get two at a time. I don't know why. Yes, I see Digger. I see you. Oh my goodness. He has, his name is so appropriate. <laughs> it's like silly little guy. Oh my gosh. He's driving me nuts walking up there and coming back to see if I'm paying attention. No, I'm trying to get the moonfish out of the pond before the night is over. Thank you. Three star, three star moonfish is not too shabby. I'm very happy with that. So moonfish sell really well in the apothecary. I'm saying apothecary. I'm losing it. They sell really well in the general store. So because I was getting moonfish out of that pond, I thought I might come up here and check this pond. Because sometimes if I, if I hit it at the right time, I can get more moonfish. So we'll see if I can get some here. And digger, just chill, guy. It's all right. I'm trying to get moonfish. Yeah, look at that. Double, double. I like the doubles. It makes me so excited. So it's hard to see in the dark, as you can see. But I have this thing about turning on the lantern. I really do think it, it affects the fish. And I don't know, it makes them harder to catch, lower quality, uh, less fish. I don't know. I just have a thing about it. So instead, I kind of wander around in the dark. And I get pretty lucky. Um, as you can see, my fishing skill is pretty good and I'm almost to another level, which I have no idea what that will mean. Um, but I love fishing so much. It's my understanding you, the higher your levels are, the better and higher quality fish and more rare fish that you can catch. So in my, in my particular lifetime, I expect to be an excellent fisher. Supposedly when you pass on, uh, your essence to your air, they maintain your skills. I don't know that. I don't know how that works. So I'm really excited about when that happens. And it is going to be a very, very long time. Uh, there's some fish here that we haven't even started to get working on. Um, I've already got the fishy wishies and uh, other ones. So we've got a, there's a list. Um, I can look on my own in-game books and things and see if I can figure out where to catch those fish. Uh, if I can't, then there is a spreadsheet I've talked about, the ingredient spreadsheet that, um, look at a little dog, look at a little digger sitting next to me, he's cute. Uh, there's a spreadsheet that shows the ingredient um, attributes. It, that same spreadsheet has fish locations. Oh, a copper ward, not bad. It shows the, where the fish can be found and when. So it's a very useful spreadsheet. It has all kinds of things. If we go to that link that's in my description down there, you look at the bottom. Uh, it's just like a regular spreadsheet. It has tabs at the bottom. They are labeled. So go check them out. And so when, I'm, when I need things like a mud kipper, I have no idea where to get it. And if I can't figure it out in-game, then I will go to uh, that spreadsheet and go find out where to get the mud kippers and go get them. So it is 5 a.m. Oh my goodness. I think that's going to have to be the end of our day and it's going to be the end of our episode. Really quickly here, we're going to look at both the rest of whatever we got from John Bowes. Thank you. Account summary for my shops. The, moon, the Sun Emporium. This is the fish market, I think. And this is for the apothecary. Yeah, look at that. 27 
seven zero that's 2770 reputation points so we're doing so well with that and i'm so happy with it we'll check and see what ash brought us after that it'll be time to hit the hay and get an hour's worth of rest before we start our next day thank you so much for watching secret word of the day is fish so no i don't normally give it at the end but i did this time thank you for again for watching please subscribe if you haven't already give that video a like the most important thing is i want you to have a wonderful rest of your day